Young people, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can hear me. Bonjour, hello to everyone. And it is a wonderful way to see this summit up and running. It's certainly a hard act for me to follow, but I do feel the energy, even if it's online. A big reminder today um, that COVID is still very much around, but they couldn't keep me out of the room because COVID can't beat technology and it cannot beat the draw and the power of young people. So really, really, really happy to be with you today. Uh, and thank you for so far the amazing contributions and the performers. I want to thank Ian. That spoken word was so powerful. And the, the words I take away with me, and there's so many more, but what I could catch, no melanin in the books that we study. Celebrate every part of who we are and a change that doesn't have our address. And I sincerely hope by the end of this pre-summit and the summit in New York, that it will certainly have an address in every community and every society in the world. Thank you, Karina, for reminding us about the wars in Ukraine and around the world and that they must end now. And if there's any seeds that we need to sow in the minds of men, because there are very few women involved in this, except to take the burden of war and suffering, then we need to sow those seeds of peace. So thank you so much. And of course, um, Franco from beautiful Kibera, um, you are that dance hero there and bringing that into education is an amazing inspiration. So we have started this pre-summit with a movement, a movement that really brings for us the power of what we need, not to have a T for ticking and tweaking, but to have a T for transformation in the very essence of it. So I'm really delighted to be opening today's summit not in person, and I wish I was, I'm just a few uh, meters away um, in quarantine, but with UNESCO and with such a powerful leader, Stefania Genanini, and also with my colleague and true leader on education, the European Commissioner Opelayan. Thank you, Yuta, for your incredible personal commitment. Really excited about today's program, especially to the chance to continue to hear from you and engage across generations. And I did hear from an amazing envoy yesterday who really spoke to the very many issues that you will be um, speaking to through the week. I'll try and be as brief as possible because you've been hearing people like me for a very long time. But what I would like to do is to share with you some of the messages that my boss, we call him feminist in chief, Antonio Guterres, the secretary general of the UN, this is what he shared with me when we were beginning the preparations for this summit only a few short months ago. First, he said we have to aim high, really high, and to make sure that we see transformation in its real sense, not at the global level, but at the local level. We all feel that our world is under enormous stress. We face a number of crises, COVID, conflict, climate change, inequality, and a breakdown in the social contract and the trust between people and their governments. At the same time, our societies and economies are exp experiencing change at a really dizzy pace. Technology, urbanization, demographics, and political and social norms are all undergoing fundamental change. If we want to solve the crises, he has said to us, let's try to steer our, word, our world towards a better future and achieve the goals of the 2030 Agenda. There's still the best framework on the table that bring people together. But we need a new outlook, a new approach, and a major push for progress. Because whatever it is we've been doing in the last few years, it's not getting us to the goals. We are off track. We were off track even before the pandemic. But we need to do this together. This needs to be what we co-create. And in many ways, he said, this does start with education. We know that education is central to human dignity and respect, central to our individual paths in life, central to securing peace and building nations, central to tolerant societies and successful economies. But we also know that the education gaps are growing and budgets are shrinking. Both have been made worse by the crises. And in the midst of these changes, education systems in many parts of the world remain largely the same as when I went to school. And that was quite a while ago, and it really does not work for today. 
So we know that simply doing more of the same, better or even faster, just won't cut it. It won't be enough to fundamentally address the root causes of exclusion and inequity in education. And it won't be enough just to empower learners with the values, skills and knowledge they need, that you need to thrive in today's world. So let's aim high, way beyond the usual, uh, the usual tame. This is the time to, to, to go further with education and to really do the transformations. The second me message he gave was that this summit is not about rethinking what and the how of education, because we do know that. It's about building a movement to make that transformation happen. The, there is a movement in climate. There was a movement for HIV and AIDS. There can be a movement for education. The education that our societies need today and tomorrow, and they won't come overnight nor will they happen unless we fight for it. One way or another, we've all been in education and we know that there are a few sectors more difficult to change and frankly, more politically volatile than education. And as the special advisor, Mr. Leonardo Garnier likes to remind us, across history, no human right, no fundamental change in our societies has ever been granted graciously. So we need to build a movement for transformation governments, business, civil society, the international community, and so many more. But perhaps most of all, we will need you, the young people of the world. We, will not, we should not be naive about youth. You're not a homogeneous group. You're not all angels. And as a mother of six kids and three grandchildren, I can vouch for that. But there is nothing naive about saying that young people will determine whether the transformation of education comes to pass or not. This is not a cliche, it is the plain truth. Not because you're the most immediately affected by our education systems, but because much like the climate crises, you will inherit the effects of our failures today. And because you have the political power to make change happen, but because you are more connected than ever before, you're more empowered than ever before, and you are more aware of what is possible. And so I'd like to encourage every young person with us today in the room, outside of the room, to help us grow a movement for education transformation. Share your ideas, what you think we should be doing our current, with our current education systems, and what needs to be kept, and what needs to be developed, and maybe even what needs to be discarded. Engage your peers in the preparations of the youth declaration, in the thematic action tracks, in the critical national consultations that are underway or getting underway in almost 100 countries, but also remembering the very many of us are not connected. And how do you connect with the youth that are there and have the, have the technology to do so and those that don't? Finally, mobilize with civil society to ensure that when world leaders come to New York in September, they know that you're expecting strong and ambitious national, but also international commitments to make education transformation happen. The UN family, it's a huge footprint with partners like UNICEF, UNESCO, UNDP, all here to support you in more than 130 countries. Challenge them. It is their job to ensure that we convene, that we bring people together, that we help to make a more enabling environment. Dear friends, the last message that the SG conveyed to me is a clear one. We need to get to work yesterday. Time is of essence. We should act with a sense of urgency that the state of education and the state of the world today demands and that all of you have a right and deserve. So let's make the most of the opportunity that the summit and pre-summit will provide, create a new path for education, reimagining both what and how we learn. Let's work together to secure the political commitment, the societal engagement, public financing and international cooperation needed to make it happen, where it matters most, in a classroom. Define that classroom, define the communities that need the right response to that education and that education becomes an experience of everyone and that we don't leave anyone behind. Thank you so much and I so wish I was in that room today. <laughs>